Okay, we are going to discuss the evanescent wave. We consider a symmetrical dielectric slab wave guide and we know that there are three layers in uh, <coughs> a symmetrical dielectric slab wave guide. The upper layer let me represent the upper layer by U, the central layer by C, and the bottom layer by B. So, there are three layers. The upper layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide is represented by U. The central layer is represented by C and the bottom layer is represented by B. The light ray travels in the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide and the central layer is also known as film. So we can say that the light ray travels in the film of the symmetrical slab wave guide. There are two rays in the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide. The ray which is moving in the upward direction and the ray which is moving in the downward direction. The interference of these two rays will take place in the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide and due to the interference of these two rays a standing wave pattern is developed uh, in in uh, in the central layer of the symmetrical wave guide so a standing a standing wave pattern takes place in uh, the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide the standing wave pattern is shown in uh, this particular figure so you see uh, here is the standing wave pattern uh, which is taking place due to the interference of the two rays in uh, the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide. We assume that there is uh, no wave in the upper as well as the bottom layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide. We assume that the light wave exists only in the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide and uh, there is no light wave in the upper as well as in the uh, bottom layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide. But this is not true in practice. You see, a tail of this uh, wave uh, exist in uh, the upper uh, as well as lower layer of uh, the uh, symmetrical slab wave guide and this tail is known as uh, evanescent wave so you guys can see a tail over here and you guys can see a tail over here so a tail exists in the upper as well as in the lower layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide and this tail is known as evanescent wave so a tail of the wave exists in the upper as well as lower layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide and this tail is known as evanescent wave <coughs> so the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave is represented by E2 and the electric field intensity of this evanescent wave is equal to A e raised to power minus alpha y minus d by 2 sine of omega t minus beta z ax. So this is the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave and this evanescent wave exists in the upper as well as bottom layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide. We want to find out a so you see a 
uh, in this particular equation is unknown so we are going to find out a and similarly alpha which is known as the attenuation factor is unknown we need to find out you see this attenuation factor as well so we are going to uh, find out a and alpha in uh, the equation for <coughs> excuse me in the equation for e2 well in order to calculate a in uh, this uh, particular equation we are going to apply the boundary conditions and uh, we consider uh, two fields in the boundary condition we consider e1 which is the electric field intensity of the light wave in the central layer of the symmetrical slave wave guide and we consider e2 which is the electric field intensity of the tail which exists in the upper as well as in the bottom layer of the symmetrical slave wave guide and we know that this tail is known as uh, evanescent wave so e2 is uh, the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave you see e1 is a vector quantity and this vector quantity is in the direction of the unit vector uh, ax so e1 is a vector quantity and this vector quantity is in the direction of the unit vector ax similarly e2 is a vector quantity and e2 is in the direction of the uh, unit vector ax so uh, we apply the boundary condition the boundary condition states that uh, whenever a wave travels from one medium to another medium uh, the tangential component of the wave does not change the normal component if any will change so uh, e1 is entirely tangential to the interface similarly e2 is entirely tangential to the interface and we consider the interface between the upper layer and the central layer of the symmetrical slave wave guide so we consider this interface uh, this is the interface between the upper and the central layer of the symmetrical slab wave guide so uh, e1 is entirely tangential to this interface and e2 is entirely tangential to the interface so according to the boundary condition e2 will be equal to e1 so this is e2 which is known as the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave uh, here is e2 which is known as the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave and here is e1 which is the electric field intensity of the light wave in the central layer of the symmetrical slave wave guide well uh, we know that uh, e2 will be equal to e1 at y is equal to d by 2 as well so uh, e2 will be equal to e1 at uh, y is equal to d by 2 if we put the value of y on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side of the boundary condition uh, we get a sine of omega t minus beta z ax uh, which is equal to e1 cos of hd by 2 sine of omega t minus beta z ax so uh, you see if we simplify this equation sine of omega t minus beta z ax will be cancelled with sine of omega t minus beta z ax and a comes out to be e1 cos of hd uh, by 2 so this is the value of a uh, in the equation for the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave so we have calculated a with the help of boundary condition now we are going to find out alpha in order to find out alpha we consider 
the wave equation. So let us consider the wave equation. Here is the wave equation del square E2 del square E2 is equal to minus omega square mu naught square epsilon 2 E2 this equation is known as wave equation so we consider the wave equation of the electric field intensity E2 and we know that uh, E2 is equal to A into E raised to power minus alpha y minus d by 2 sine of omega t minus beta z ax so uh, if you focus on the equation for e2 e2 is a function of y as well as z so e2 is a function of uh, y as well as z so del square e2 will be equal to the left hand side of this particular equation so we have curly square by curly y square of e2 plus curly square by curly z square of e2 which will be equal to minus omega square mu naught epsilon 2 and we have e2 on the right hand side as well so please write down e2 over here okay so uh, we uh, partially uh, differentiate e2 two times with respect to y and we partially differentiate e2 two times with respect to z and then we simplify this particular equation so if we simplify this particular equation we will get alpha square minus beta square which will be equal to minus omega mu naught uh, minus omega square mu naught we have mu naught we have mu naught and then we have uh, epsilon 2 so this is mu naught uh, so if we simplify uh, this uh, particular uh, equation if we simplify uh, this particular equation uh, we get alpha square minus beta square which is equal to the right hand side so alpha square minus beta square will be equal to minus omega square mu naught epsilon 2 well uh, we know that omega square mu naught epsilon 2 is equal to k naught square n2 square and we know that beta 2 square is equal to k naught n1 square k naught square n1 square sine square theta t so uh, alpha square will be equal to beta square minus omega square mu naught epsilon 2 and we put the values of alpha and beta in this particular equation uh, we, we put the value of beta and uh, omega square mu naught epsilon 2 in this particular equation so uh, we get alpha square and alpha square will be equal to k naught and 1 sin theta whole square minus k naught into whole square and we simplify uh, this particular equation for uh, alpha so alpha will be equal to k 
के नॉट अंडर रूट एन वन स्क्वेयर साइन स्क्वेयर थीटा माइनस एन टू स्क्वेयर सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैलकुलेट अल्फा सो दिस लेक्चर वॉज रिलेटेड टू द एवन एस एंट वेव सो वट इज एवन एस एंट वेव बेसिकली वी एज्यूम दैट द लाइट रे ट्रेवल्स इन द सेंट्रल लेयर ऑफ द सेमेट्रिकल स्लेब वेव गाइड एंड देयर इज नो लाइट वेव इन द अपर एज वेल एज लोअर लेयर ऑफ द सेमेट्रिकल स्लेब वेव गाइड बट दिस इज नॉट ट्रू इन प्रैक्टिस इन प्रैक्टिस अ टेल ऑफ द लाइट वेव एग्जिस्ट इन द अपर एज वेल एज लोअर लेयर ऑफ the symmetrical slab wave guide and this tail is known as evanescent wave and we consider the equation for the uh, evanescent wave and uh, so we consider uh, the equation for this evanescent wave and this evanescent wave is represented by and this evanescent wave is represented by e2 where e2 is equal to a e raised to power minus alpha y minus d by 2 sin of omega t minus beta z ax so if you consider this equation for the evanescent wave uh, a in this particular equation is unknown and alpha in this particular equation is unknown so uh, we uh calculate the value of a and the value of alpha so we calculate a with the help of boundary condition and uh, we apply the boundary condition uh at uh, the upper interface of the symmetrical slab wave guide and a comes out to be e1 cos of hd by 2 so we calculate a with the help of uh with the help of a boundary condition so this is the value of a in uh, the equation for the evanescent wave in the equation for the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave and then uh, we apply the wave equation and with the help of uh, this uh, wave equation uh, we uh, calculate the uh, alpha in the equation for the electric field intensity of the evanescent wave and this is the value of alpha alpha is equal to k not under root n1 square sin square theta minus n2 square so Uh, this is enough for today and we shall discuss the modes in the symmetrical slab wave guide in the upcoming class so thank you so much